Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I am going to go over my Overland rig, the 2021 Ram Rebel. Now in the front of the truck, I do have the full steel bumper from Expedition 1. Some of the things I do like about this bumper is that it does have uh, cutouts for the pre-existing sensors uh, that came with the truck. So I was able to transfer them over and install them onto this bumper. Um, as you can see, there is a big hole cut out over here on both sides, and this is for additional lighting. And the fog lights from the Ram Rebel I was able to carry over. For this section, I am planning to install three inch amber LED lights. Now in the center of the bumper, as you can see, there is a cutout at the top over here. Uh, this does accommodate a 21 inch light bar. The winch, I do have the worn Xeon 12S Platinum winch. So the 12 stands for the 12,000 pounds. The S stands for the synthetic rope. And the uh, Platinum is for a remote controlled winch uh, feature. This is great because you don't have to plug in your winch controller to your winch to control it. I mean, it's not a necessity, but it is a good feature and option to have. But if you do not decide to use that feature, it does have cutouts on either side of the bumper so that you can reach in, access the winch from either side of the bumper to plug in your controller. But something you should take into consideration when installing steel bumpers in the front and in the back is that it is going to be heavy. So it is going to add more weight to the front load of your rig, as well as the rear if you do have rear bumpers as well. So having aftermarket suspension is definitely recommended because the stock suspension is not totally engineered, completely engineered to have that additionally added weight in the front of the vehicle. For me, as you know, I did install the Falcon shocks in the front and in the back. And so far it has been able to get the job done. Um, I will talk about more about the rear part of the suspension because I did have to add a few additional things uh, for the sagging and I'll get into that in just a minute. As for the tires and wheels, I do have the Method NV wheels on the truck. It is an 18 inch wheel. Uh, it has simulated bead locks, not actual bead locks. And for the shoes, I do have the BFG KO2s. And these are the 35 inch KO2s and they've been fantastic so far. Something to definitely take into consideration is that this wheel and this tire, they are definitely on the pricier side. This uh, wheel and tire combination adds up to about 100 pounds on each corner of your rig. So you might want to take that into consideration as well. Also, the valve stem has been replaced. Wanderlust Overland installed these Apex valve stems in here. Um, the cool thing about these valve stems is that they are able to do a rapid deflate and that's their primary use. The way this is used is you unscrew the cap and then you pull on the lever and it actually deflates the, your tire and from what I've seen between three to in like six or seven PSI per second. So as far as the ditch lights go, I do have the rigid 363 inch lights. As far as mounting, I do have mounting brackets that was made for this vehicle that you can actually uh, buy at rigid. As for the truck bed, I do have the Leitner Designs ACS Forge rack on here. Uh, as you know, on my Tundra, I had the ACS Classic. The Forge is supposed to be a little bit stronger and is able to carry a little bit more weight. But in my opinion, if you're looking for something to mount a rooftop tent plus an awning or something like that on top of the rack, the Classic or the Forge, the Classic would be just as good. So I think they're both great options. Anyways, on here, another reason why I like this rack is the fact that they have modular options for storage. Uh, this one, as you can see on the driver's side, I do have the extra large gear pod, which is one long continuous piece. Handles are actually lockable with keys. So if you are away from your rig, you're able to lock them up for security purposes. And these do have self-locking hinges, which I love because you don't need to prop them up with a rod or anything like that. Now on each side over here, I do have uh, gear bags that um, is created by Lightner. And in here, as you can see, I have one for tools, for food, and for first aid. Now on the other side, on the passenger side, I do have tire gear, uh, tire recovery, like inflation, deflation devices, 
And as you can see on the passenger side, there are these mounting plates that people can put things like roto packs or something like that here. For me, since I have a separate jerry can for gas, uh, I'm just kind of leaving it open here, just leaving the options open. But at this point in time, there's nothing that I can think of that I want to put in here. So right now it's just here just to provide some cover to whatever's inside the bed. So directly above that, I do have the rooftop tent on here, as you can see. I do have the CVT mount hood in the medium size. A lot of times people ask me what size that rooftop tent is, so I opted for the medium. Something to keep in mind is that this is about 200 pounds, so it'll add that additional weight onto the uh, truck bed or your roof of your vehicle if you do decide to go with this tent. And as you can see, just recently, I did have an awning installed. It's a 270 degree awning, and I actually got that done yesterday. And it is from an Cab, and I did want to get this installed before Pacific Northwest Expo in Bend, Oregon. So I got uh, this, what was available from the Mule Expedition Outfitters, and they do carry uh, the Cab products. The cool thing about this 270 awning is that it does have a lining that allows for more insulation in the fabric. So now the way it was mounted, it was mounted actually on the Lightner rack. Uh, the Lightner rack actually has the HT mount for like the 270 awnings that are more heavier that you can actually attach right onto the load bar on the Lightner rack itself. Now, as you can see over here, I did have risers installed on top of the rack to be able to give some higher clearance for the tent. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to be able to move the tent forward over the cab of the truck, uh, as well as to clear the roof rack that's on the cab or the cab rack of the truck as well. So I needed to have that additional clearance. So I put it in the top setting for this riser. And so far, it's been very sturdy. I haven't heard any squeaks while driving, noticed any movements or play with all of these installed. Now, one thing I did notice is that when we were getting this installed at Mule, to fully extend it out to the 270 position, the bars to bring it out are actually obstructed by latches from the tent. So what we will need to do is, uh, we are gonna need to bring the tent a little bit more forward. And what I will need to do is actually get another set of risers and a bar so that I can have this bar in the back be used to hold up the awning and a second set of bars to be moved up a little bit more, installed a little more up front so that that can hold the tent. Now for the top of the truck, I do have the front runner roof rack. The reason I like the front runner rack is the fact that it is so modular. I am able to install the accessories from front runner to be able to mount things. For example, this is the shovel. This is the crazy beaver shovel that I got. And I am able to use these clamps as an accessory to the rack to be able to mount here right on top. All right, now, so for the top front, I did mount the light bar that has actually uh, a front runner light bar. As for the passenger side, I do have an axe mount. This is an accessory also from front runner, which allows you to mount an axe. And it does come with two contact points for the axe, one for the bottom of the handle and one for the axe head itself and I was able to mount it on this side. Now towards the front of the rack, the Wii Boost. So Wonderlust Overland uh, had that installed for me over there and they had the wiring done into the cab. And the cool thing about this is they used the ram mounts to be able to mount this antenna on the exterior on the rack. When I'm driving at highway speeds or anything like that, I am gonna have the antenna folded down. Something to think in the consideration is the Wii Boost is great for signal boosting if there is signal, but if you're in a location where there's absolutely no signal whatsoever, you are still not gonna get a signal with the Wii Boost. Now something to think in the consideration when installing a roof rack is that actually the Ram Rebel did not come with any pre-existing screw points for any roof racks. So something like this required some drilling into the steel. So on the spare tire, I do have mounted a trash bag. This is Oscar's mobile hideout from last US bag. I've used it for quite a while now and I absolutely love it. Easy to clean out, I just spray it down. Um, carries a good amount of trash. I put my contractor bags in here to line it and carry my trash in and out. You can also carry other things like firewood or gear or whatever, or recovery gear. The rear bumper is also an Expedition 1 steel bumper. It has dual swing outs utilizing a very robust hinge. On the driver's side, I carry a five gallon gas needle can and a blue Lifesaver water jerry can using the jerry can mounts from Expedition 1. You will also notice that there is another mount that is for a high lift jack. On the passenger side, I carry my spare 35 inch tire. Both swing outs lock in place when opened. The bumper itself has cutouts for the factory rear parking sensors and the pin connectors for towing. It also accommodates the stock license plate LED lights. There are also cutouts for additional 3-inch LED lights as well. Expedition 1 also has an optional camera relocation kit, which utilizes the factory camera and relocates it from the tailgate handle into the bumper right above the license plate. I replaced the factory tailgate with the mountain hatch tailgate cutting board. It is actually a flat surface with cutouts for cups, so I can put cups in here. One of my favorite modifications on my rig, which I also did for the Tundra, is this decked drawer system. This decked drawer system is awesome. 
because it allows me to have space because now that I have this roof rack or bed rack and stuff installed, if I have things that are more towards the cab, I don't have to try to reach in. And as you can see, I can still put stuff, stuff on top. Also, the great thing about this drawer system is that there are locks that you can install to lock up your drawer system. Now, as you can see on this side, I do have a uh, refrigerator. This fridge is mounted on this tray, which slides out. And of course, you, you can see I uh, just have some of these gear just on the side over here. But um, this refrigerator, I hook it up to my Jackery to power it up. And it's been great so far. I am still do, in the process of doing laundry and testing. I'll eventually probably do a video, review video out on it. As far as the slide out tray, there are points on the drawer system itself that have metal rods underneath where you can actually drill in to this composite to be able to uh, put screws in. So I do have screws in here at four different points to be able to mount this tray. Also mounted on the Lightner Rack load bar is the Rigid Amber D-Series Pro Lights. I have them mounted on the passenger side to utilize as camp lights at night as amber lighting does not attract bugs or impair night vision, as well as chase lights for dusty daytime driving conditions. Now in the rear underside, I already mentioned that I have the Falcon 2-inch leveling suspension kit installed. The RAM utilizes a coil spring rear suspension rather than a leaf spring, so there's no way to beef up the suspension for added weight load on the truck bed by adding extra leafs. So in this case, I swapped out the factory coils for dual rate coils from Icon Vehicle Dynamics, swapped out the bump stops for timber and bump stops, which provide added support in terms of height, and also swapped out the factory sway bars for adjustable ones from Hellwig. This did help reduce some sagging, but something to note is that the truck bed is resting on the bump stops, which changes the ride dynamics into a more stiffer ride. Potholes or bumps are felt more noticeably after the swap. So some people recommended airbags, and I am taking that into consideration for the future. On the sides of the truck, I have the Go Rhino side steps installed onto the body of the truck using factory bolt locations. This is not a rock slider, as I don't find a need for them in the type of overlanding I do, but eventually in the near future, I plan on installing sliders that will bolt onto the frame of the truck. A question I receive a lot is regarding the wrap on the truck. It is the rugged line of vinyl from Avery Dennison. The cost was about $1,200 for a 5 by 75 foot roll. I will do a separate video for interior mods as there are a lot of items I'd like to go over as well. With that said, there are still some exterior mods that I have planned that I'd like to share with you in the coming months. I'll provide a link in the description to all the items mentioned in this video. For now, thank you for watching and as always, be safe, take care, and I'll see you next time.